if you're one of those people who thinks that they might love to hike the Appalachian Trail, but you think to yourself, ah, there's no way I can go six months with only hiking and not doing anything else. I have great news for you. There are plenty of other fun things, side excursions that you, that you can do while you're hiking the Appalachian Trail. And today I want to tell you about 10 of them. P.S. Before we get started with these 10 things that you can do aside from hiking on the Appalachian Trail, I just want to kindly ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more hiking, Appalachian Trail, backpacking, Colorado content, and also check me over out, check me out over on Instagram at Audie Payne. The link will be in the show notes. By the way, sorry about the crunching noise of the snow. It's very, the snow is like very, very crunchy out here today. So my apologies for that. Please bear with me. P.S. There's Shamrock ahead of me. He's being so impatient. He's like, why are you filming? We're hiking. <laughs> Hi, Sham. Okay, number one, swimming. There are so many swimming opportunities on the Appalachian Trail. I brought a bathing suit with me, just a very lightweight one, a small bikini for the occasional swim, and boy, did I end up using it a lot. There are so many swimming opportunities. I would say if you're starting at the normal time between mid-March and mid-April, tons of swimming ops from Virginia northbound. I mean, it was way too cold when I started the trail. It was free a lot of times it was below freezing. There was snow or ice on the ground. So I was not doing a lot of swimming at the very beginning of the trail, and hence I was probably my dirtiest and sweatiest at the beginning of the trail because of that. But once I got to Virginia, there are so many creeks to swim in. We actually had this one week in Virginia, Southern Virginia, where we were swimming every single day. We affectionately, me and my family, we affectionately refer to it as Creek Week. It was incredible. Uh, there are so many good places to swim. And then when you go farther north, there are a lot of lakes in New York. Tons, tons of lakes and ponds in Vermont and tons of lakes and ponds in Maine. So if you get to Maine before it starts getting cold again, you will just have the absolute best swimming opportunities of the entire trail there. But seriously, tons of places to swim. So bring your bathing suit if you're like me and you don't like to just get all your clothes super wet. <laughs> Number two along those same lines, water sports. There are different places along the trail that you'll get to, you know, lakes and ponds and there might be the opportunity for some water sports. Oh, here comes Shamrock. He's like, what are you doing? Come here, buddy, say hi, come here. Anyway, there are places along the trail that you can rent like kayaks and paddle boards. One example, I actually did not do it here, but I had friends who do it, was Watauga Lake in Tennessee. I definitely had friends who rented kayaks there and I looked it up. I'll drop some links in the show notes for places that you can rent these things. Um, they're not like exactly on the AT, like the places that you rent them, but you do actually, Watauga Lake, you actually walk around it on the AT. So that's a really good place to do some water sports. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but you actually have to take a quote unquote ferry across the Kennebec River up in Maine because it can be dangerous to cross without doing so. And the ferry is actually a canoe. So if you don't do any water sports the entire rest of the AT, you will be doing a water sport as you cross the Kennebec River in Maine. And number three, this is a little different, so it's, I'm gonna give it its own number. But in Front Royal, Virginia, and in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, you are on along a river. And on those rivers, you can actually rent tubes to go river tubing down the river, which my family and I did in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. I used to do this with my friends when I lived in DC, like during the summers, we'd go up once or twice to Harpers Ferry and do this. So once we got there, I was like, we gotta do it. We gotta go river tubing while we're here. So we did, and it was so fun. Again, it's not right on the AT. You gotta go a little ways away, but we got a ride from these amazing people that we were staying at their hostel. This hostel doesn't exist anymore, I don't think, but Tumbelina and Wahoo were running this hostel at the time. They were amazing people, and Wahoo gave us a ride out to go tubing and came and picked us up, so there are definitely ways to get out there. It wasn't that far away from the trial, so it can be done. And it's really fun, so I would really recommend it, especially in the heat of the summer. Number four, if you like movies, go to the drive-in movie theater. There is a drive-in movie theater in Warwick, New York. It's only a few miles off the trail. I actually got off in New Jersey, not in New York, to go to this drive-in. And at the time that I hiked in 2018, they actually allowed through hikers to spend the night at the drive-in. So you could, they, there was this hill at the drive-in and they were like, okay, you can go set up on that hill, watch the movie, 
here's a free radio. Like you don't have to pay to come in here. I can't guarantee that they're still doing that for through hikers, but at the time they were allowing through hikers to come in for free and camp there. And right near the drive-in, there is a grocery store. There's a cidery, there are restaurants. So it's a really excellent place to do a side excursion. I went with a few friends when I was hiking through New Jersey and oh my gosh, what a nice business honestly letting through hikers come in for free so sweet of them again i can't guarantee it's still free or that they that they still let you camp there but either way i'm sure it's not that expensive to go to the drive-in and it's just a really fun side excursion go see a movie you still get to be outside super fun number five as if you're not already working your leg muscles enough go for a bike ride the virginia creeper trail is a 35 mile rail trail in southwest virginia it goes through Damascus, Virginia, and the AT actually follows it for a little while. But you could rent a bike in Damascus and take a little bike ride while you're there. You're doing a zero day from hiking? Hey, go for a bike ride. Seriously though, it's a gorgeous trail. It's so fun. Lots of people go down to Damascus for the weekend for a little short vacation to go for a bike ride on this trail. It's just a really, really nice trail. I did not actually go for a bike ride on the Creeper Trail while I was there, but I would go for a bike ride on the Creeper Trail perhaps another time. So yeah, if you're a biker, you're, miss you're missing your bicycle, take a little ride on the Creeper Trail. And by the way, if you're not a purist, if you don't feel like you have to hike every single mile of the AT, you can actually cut out a few AT miles that go, you know, of course, up and over mountains, and instead just walk along the, along the flat Creeper Trail for a while and it'll connect back to the AT. <laughs> I did not do that while I was through hiking because I was being a purist for the most part. But when my friends and I went back last spring to do a section of the AT, we went through Damascus and we actually decided to stay on the creeper trial, trail for those extra miles instead of doing the tough AT ones. <laughs> it was really fun. And we found morels, which are these, oh my gosh, so delicious edible wild mushrooms. <laughs> Numero six, if you are a beer drinker, there are so many microbreweries to check out along the AT. I definitely checked out a few myself. It was really fun. My family also, for the most part, loved beer. So it was really fun to get to try all of these different breweries along the trail. One of my very favorites was Devil's Backbone in Virginia, near Charlottesville, Virginia. And they have a huge campus, like huge grounds out in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's Their campus is super pretty. They're super kind of hikers. They let you camp there for free. And then they actually give you a really cheap hiker breakfast as well as a gift if you pass on by. I think the breakfast is only like $5. Hopefully they're still doing that during COVID. I bet that they are. But uh, the breakfast was amazing. And it's really smart of them to do this because my family and I definitely spent a lot of money there. Their food is amazing. Their beer is so good. They have so many beers on tap. And in the summertime, okay, I'm gonna give this a number seven, but go to outdoor concerts at places like Devil's Backbone because they have these outdoor summer concerts and they say that partially they're for the through hikers passing by, also for their patrons, obviously in the area. But it's, uh, yeah, you could catch a show, catch a show along the trail. I actually went to, I did not catch the, any of the concerts at Devil's Backbone, the timing just didn't work out, but I did take a side excursion to Bonnaroo Music Festival in Tennessee while I was on the trail. It was quite far from where I was on the AT, <laughs> but my friends from DC were going and I really wanted to see them like while I was hiking the trail. It was like in the middle, basically. If I were to plan again, I would not go back to Bonnaroo, both because I feel like I've aged out of going to that festival, but also because I had to leave my family for a few days. And once I was on the AT, I was like so, so, so into trail culture that I did not want to get off the trail at the time, but I did because my friends were going. I already bought my ticket. My brother was going and it ended up being super fun aside from the fact that I got a stomach bug while I was there, <laughs> but I wouldn't do that again. But what I would do is try to time it so that I was going to catch the summer concerts at places like Devil's Backbone. And oh, by the way, I also want to say about the breweries that Devil's Backbone is not the only one that you that will let you spend the night on their grounds. There are several others along the trail. You just have to, you know, maybe check out AWOL, check out Far Out, or maybe call their breweries in advance to see if they do have a big grounds, if they do let hikers spend the night on their grounds for free because many of them do. The microbreweries are 
it's so nice to hikers along the AT. So if you like beer, definitely stop by. Number eight, go bowling. Yes, bowling. <laughs> I love bowling. I've been going bowling since I was a kid. My parents love to bowl. My brothers love to bowl. It's really fun. And when I was in Asheville, North Carolina, which I went to Asheville for a couple of days as I exited the Great Smoky Mountains, it was about an hour drive. I know that you can get shuttles there if you do want to go in and check out Asheville. It's a really cool, funky little city. So if you have the spare time, I would recommend going there. Amazing restaurants. And by that time, you're starting to get your hiker hunger since you've been through the Great Smoky Mountains. But my amazing friend, Jessica, who's, who was one of my roommates in college and is still one of my greatest friends, she actually rescued Ibex and I from a snowstorm that was rolling in as we were getting out of the Smoky Mountains. Let us come stay with her for a couple days and we got to explore the city. And while we were there, we went bowling. <laughs> It was nasty outside, it was cold, it was snowy. We were happy not to be on the trail at that very moment and very happy to be in a nice warm bowling alley drinking pitchers of beer and eating fried foods. <laughs> I just think, you know, bowling, it's a vibe. Why not, uh, why not do it while you're on the AT, especially on a cold, dreary day when you're wanting to get inside? Number nine, mini golf. <laughs> okay. The northernmost town in New Hampshire, I'm totally blanking on the name of the town right in this moment, but there is a mini golf course there. So this town, you actually have two opportunities to go to this town. You can either hitch there right as you get out of the White Mountains, or you can hitch there right as you get out of the Wildcats. And yes, I know the Wildcats, someone told me, are technically part of the White Mountains, but they are like their own kind of specific thing. So. You'll get what I mean when you're hiking the trail. But but either way, you get two opportunities to go to this town. And you gotta hitch into town because it is several miles to get into the town. But once you're there, it's a very, you can walk around the town pretty easily. And we just passed by a mini golf course and my family and I were like, hey, that looks fun. Let's go do some mini golf. And we made it fun. We made a little bet out of it. Whoever won, the other people had to buy them a an ice cream treat, I believe. And hey, guess what? I won, so I got the treat. It was great. <laughs> anyway, it was really fun. It's just like, you gotta find these goofy things to keep you entertained, you know? And the community is just a, such a big part of the fun and find yourself some fun trail friends that are willing to do things like go mini golfing on the trail. Okay, number 10 kind of goes without saying. This is maybe a cheat one, <laughs> but if you have the extra money and you love checking out new foods and eating at restaurants, you will have so much opportunity to do this while you're hiking the AT. Your hiker hunger really ramps up, like the obviously the more miles you're doing and the harder work that you're doing, like your hunger just gets out of control and it is so much fun to eat when you're that hungry all the time. So it's really fun when you go into different towns to just check out the local restaurants. And while you're doing that, like not only are you getting to check out new foods and, you know, just different uh, types of foods and all that jazz, but you also get to start chatting with the local people, which I think is really fun and kind of checking out the local atmosphere. And, you know, I think that really changes by state. Like each state has its own kind of special little culture. So Going to restaurants is a cool way to kind of get to see what what the local kind of culture is all about. So yeah, eating. Lots and lots and lots of eating. Obviously, if you're on a budget, you want to limit this. And you certainly do not have to be spending your money on the restaurants if you don't want to. But when you're that hungry, it is really fun. Especially when you're taking a zero day in a town, just like go eat to your heart content and hang out at some restaurants. But Please shower first. <laughs> so there you have it guys, 10 things that you can do on the Appalachian Trail aside from hiking. I hope that you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.